This is a 112 scale armor made out of paper. In a previous video, I've made a 112 scale paper katana and animated with it. I've also said I'd make another when the video hits 100 likes, which at this point is a little bit overdue and a lot of you out there also requested an armor version. So I've made an armor template and want to share it with you so you can make one for yourself if you have a printer and paper. So if making small scale armor is something that you want to do or want to try making one yourself but don't have a 3D printer, this template is perfect for you, especially if you have a 112 scale figure on hand. So in this video, we're gonna make just that. And stay tuned till the end of the video where the same paper armor will be used to animate a battle sequence along with the paper katana. Speaking of which, despite knowing how to make a paper katana in the previous video, links down in the description as well as the iCard, I never made armor with paper before. So instead of rolling them like a paper katana, because that obviously won't work here, I need to try a different method. Okay, now we know that doesn't work. Let's see if other people had make armor with similar material before. And to no surprise, there are a few out there, but there is one problem a few actually. First, they wouldn't be able to articulate very well. So with that concern in mind, we need to lay out some parameters. First, it has to fit well with the 112 scale figure as body gun will be the base. And if we're making armor, we have to establish what constitutes an armor. For starters, it has to cover at least the main body. Well, ideally cover from the shoulder all the way to the hip area. It'd be great if it's customizable, and on top of that, it also needs to be somewhat simple to assemble, wear, as well as remove from the figure itself for you, the viewer at home, if you decide to make one yourself. And for my purpose, it needs to be articulatable to an extent, or at least not restrict too much movement when it comes to animation. Now, actual armor in real life traditionally and generally are made with a lot of restriction in mind to protect joints from sharp and pointy objects. And to solve the restriction issue, we're going to use the hinge-like concept to allow for dynamic movements in the animated sequence. Now, with all the parameters established, now we just need to make it, right? I'll say that I'm someone who has no experience in making armor or armor props. So I look at what other cosplayer and other armor smith on YouTube to learn the basics and the tips to know what to do and the things that I should be looking out for. And if you are a cosplayer yourself or have experience in making armor props and armor pieces, you'd probably have more experience than me. And if you are one, let us know down in the comments if you have any tips if you were to do this yourself. And after a little trial and error, I was actually surprised how easy it was and that I got it all on my first try. Where are you going? Nothing to see here. I definitely didn't use more than one piece of paper. And that's definitely not from all the iterations to make this. Back to me. Back to me. Yes. Yes. That's it. Now let's get started, shall we? First, download the template armor file. It's available in both PDF as well as PNG file formats. Links are available down in the description of this video. Now it is important to make sure you print it at 100% scale of the PDF file, if that's what you're using. I found that different printer and different operating system have a different preset settings. So make sure to print it with the correct settings. Make sure to view the PDF file before downloading so you know exactly what you're printing. And once it's fresh out of the printer, go ahead and cut it with your preferred cutting tool. Don't worry if the pieces are not cut to a T. I found that small imperfections are negligible, but it could affect the fine details during assembly. Of course, practice safety first when using any cutting tool, and if you're cutting something that you're not supposed to, remember you could always print another. The little symbols and icons you see here are indicators to keep you on track, and let me explain what they mean. The two small arrow pointing towards themselves means to join and connect the two parts as seen on screen. I prefer to use the paper that we're already cutting to join and connect the two parts together. But if you prefer to use a larger piece or use a different way, say like a tape or something, that works as well. And if you are cutting small piece like these, take it slow and be patient. The circling arrow indicates that the long strip should be wrapped around itself like so. The dashed lines are to be cut with a paper cutter or an X-Acto knife carefully to allow for paper strips 
to be inserted and passed through. This zigzag line symbol is to inform you so that you won't accidentally apply glue to this general area. It is there to allow for articulation for the hinge mechanic to function. Now what I like to do before cutting is to prepare the template in a way that it makes the cutting process much easier and more streamlined by cutting the small and complicated corners with the cutting knife. And of course, this is optional, but I find this works for me and it saves me a lot of effort and time when cutting out larger pieces. Let's begin by making the main body armor. After preparing or prime it, cut part A, which is the pectoral or chest piece. Join the pieces here and here, as well as the opposite side. While you wait for the glue in the first piece to fully set, cut out the small strip that is labeled number 1 on the template. This piece will work as the hinge mechanism for the later parts. And for it to work, glue on both ends and only both ends while avoiding the middle part of the piece. Apply this piece onto the chest piece that you finished earlier. And if the marking is on the back as shown on screen, apply it directly to that position. It doesn't matter if this is on the front or back, it will work either way. Here, I'm making sure there isn't any glue at the middle by inserting the tip of the scissor. And that's it for the chest piece. Let's move to part B. This is the ribcage piece, which binds from the previous piece or part A. You can use whichever side as the front, but I prefer the hinge towards the figure so it is covered. To make the process easier, fold these two parts here as seen on screen and apply glue to adhere the chest piece with the ribcage component. And if you have an SH Figure Arts body gun or any 112 scale figure, you can use the figure to assist with this process. This is of course optional if you don't have a 12 scale figure or body gun, but it does make the process easier. Once the two pieces are glued and set, cut out the piece labeled number two and apply glue only to both ends, leaving out the middle for the hinge mechanism to function properly. Now glue them down using the markings on the template as a guide. It's a good idea to check for the middle part for any glue by sliding something onto them, say like a tip of a scissor or something. Make sure there's no resistance. After making sure that they can slide properly, cut part C, which is the torso piece. And just like the previous piece, you can choose whichever side to be the front face of the armor. I prefer this side as seen on screen. The more slack or give allows more maneuver for the figure. Once you decide on that, bend the top piece that you inserted and glue it into place. Of course, feel free to cross-reference your figure at any point in time if you have one in mind. And with the torso done, it's time to cut out the next piece which is part D. This is the lower torso part of the body armor base. There are these extra part here that looks like a hook to latch onto the lower back piece. Fold the two pieces together like so and glue them down. You'll see that it has the hinge area mark on top with the part labeled number 3. Glue on both the end-to-end -end sides as well as the middle but avoid gluing where the zigzag line symbol for the hinge to function properly. And once you do, you've completed the front side of the base armor piece. Now the front side is done, it's time for the first part of the back side component, part E, the upper back piece. As usual, I prefer to prime it so I don't need to remember to cut the middle part of the back piece later. First, connect the two corners where the template shows. And if your figure has a wider upper back, you can go ahead and leave this middle part here where the two corners are supposed to join together. If not, connect them as you would normally. Then, close the loop on both sides of the two long strip at the neck. Make sure to avoid glue to allow the later piece to be inserted and connect both the front and back component. Then, glue the bottom piece for the hinge to function. Just like the front side, only glue both ends and leave the middle for the next piece to slide onto. Check if there's any resistance to allow for the next piece to slide in. If not, you can move on to the next one. The next piece is part F, the lower back. 
Use any sides you prefer. I prefer this one with the pattern. Simply slide the top part into the bottom of the previous piece and fold it down once you're happy with the length and the amount of movement to lock it down into place with glue and you're done. For the next piece is part G. And this is the last back side piece. Go ahead and join the corners of the two sides while leaving the bottom gap as is. You'll notice there's a long and short cut at the piece itself. They are there for the opening for the hook mechanism for the front piece to hug around. Now it's time to cut the part labeled number 5. Just like number 3, apply glue on both ends as well as the middle but leave some room for the hinge for part F. And just like before, decide on how much give or slack you like and fold it down and glue them in place. The last part is a long strip that acts as a strap to connect the front and back piece together. Carefully cut this part as seen on screen. This is more like a hook to attach onto the part number one on the chest component. This piece here is probably the most fragile part in this template, so we'll have to be patient because it's quite narrow, not to mention small to work on. If this piece keeps falling out of the hook, you may choose to glue it down, but in doing so means that at any point, this piece is worn or damaged, you may need to improvise or redo this whole part as it's permanently glued onto the chest piece. Insert the strap in and follow what you see in the video. I'll also put up an image on screen to help you trace where the strap is supposed to go, to help you keep it on track. And that's it for the 112 scale figure base armor. This template will most likely fit onto most figurines of this scale. And if your figurine is proportionally larger or smaller in certain area, your mileage may vary. In which case, I've also added a PNG file format for you to import into your editor and transform it to whatever proportion that fits your figures best. At this point, you can attach your own shoulder and hip guard design if you have one or a few in mind. Alternatively, you can use the one that's provided to you in the template. It is a traditional Japanese style inspired design. To do that, simply cut out the components or prime it in advance. You can cut it all out if you prefer, but I find that cutting and assembling one at a time as I go help keep things on track for me while also allowing the PVA glue to adhere fully in the process. Feel free to follow along in the video while I'll explain the basics function of the piece as it's pretty straightforward with many repetition. Aside from the top curved part of the shoulder and by extension, the hip guard, everything down below is pretty much the same. Simply layer over or under depending on what you like and keep that throughout your build. One thing to note is that some parts in the template has markings for where to attach the hinge. It is there as a suggestion and as a guide so you can follow it for a consistent placement or ignore it and attach it to wherever you like. Make sure to decide if you want a tight fit with no articulation or more slack or give to allow for small articulation. For my use case though, I like to have just a tiny bit of room for articulation. So I'm going with this tiny gap like what you see on screen. you can also stick the pieces to the joint hinge first and slide into the fitting like so. As the components are designed to cover the shoulder and hip area, all of the pieces are needed to be curved in order to cover them properly by shaping the curved area with your fingers. This should be easier as there's already PVA glue on the components, so shape the material till you're happy with them. Once you finish the first piece, repeat the same process again and make another and following the parts of the template. It's pretty much the same with slightly larger and wider so it could wrap around the hip area. After all the components are finished and ready, we can now begin the final assembly. 
Dan. The hard way it is then. First, we'll attach the shoulder guard with the shoulder strap by inserting the strap into the guard hinge opening. This will allow for more mobility at the shoulder. Make sure the shoulder strap is primed and ready by rolling and gluing the top part. Next, decide on how you like to close the loop. There's no wrong way of doing this of course, as long it works for you and it's fully secured. Finally, insert the strap onto the shoulder piece and the base armor then onto itself to close the loop. As for the hip guard, glue the top side and attach that onto the hip of the base armor on both sides. And for this last piece, pick a side that you're happy with using and glue it at the center between the two components that you just attached. And there you have it, a plain paper to a 112 scale armor. But maybe you have your own ideas and want to try out your own design and make your own template instead. There's various ways for you to do this of course, but I'll show you the way I stole cosplayers method to make a template. You'll definitely need a figure for this. So first grab a good amount of cling wrap or tape or film or whatever you call this. Then wrap it around preferably once on your figure that you want to create the template on. Depending on the figure, you might need to cut it down to size to wrap it, especially if you have a complex figure. And there's no need to wrap all the way unless you plan to do some helmet style or any other design. Use a masking tape to wrap around the same area around the figure again, preferably with one layer. Unless of course you're planning to make an onion knight armor. Multiple layer is fine, but I find it much harder to cut off, so make a note of that. After you're done with the wrapping, get a marker and draw and mark where you plan to cut according to your own design. And if you don't know where to start or where to draw, you can follow what you see on screen. And when you're happy with that, use this scissor to begin cutting. And here's a tip for you. Avoid directly cut into the figure to prevent permanent damage to the figure itself. Unless it's one of those crash dummy figures, in which case, cut away. Instead, make sure to use a sharp pair of scissors and do small and careful cuts, particularly in areas that are curved. After cutting them off, snap a photo or two or make a mental note to keep track on where all the small components are before cutting them into smaller bits of pieces. Proceed to lay the small pieces flat to draw the outline of every single individual pieces. And after drawing all the outlines, Congratulations, you have now made your own template. You can trace or scan them and make small iterations till you're happy with the final design. And this is just a guideline of course. If you have your own design of your own, uh, share it with me at Abstract Studio at Instagram. I'd love to see what you can come up with. You can of course take this template and put it into your image editor or any open source program like GIMP or Paint.net. I wonder if people still use that. All right. I guess it's time to take the armor into actual action.
If you enjoyed the video, remember to drop a like. I've also made another video and armor template for Body Chan, along with the template for female armor. So go ahead and watch that as well. I'll see you there. And I want to thank the first patron that supported me while making this video. If you want to support the channel, you can do so at Patreon or be a channel member. I post updates of current and future projects, bi-weekly, sometimes weekly, as well as the behind the scenes stuff on Patreon page and the members community posts. You'll also get exclusive access to previous iterations and additional template and prototypes I've made that didn't make onto the video. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more stop motion animation. Take care and I'll see you next time.